We've all seen the homeschool YouTube moms come on here, including myself, and present what we are going to choose for the upcoming school year's curriculum. And so I kind of wanted this video to be like an in the middle, you see point A and you see point B, I guess, but somewhere in between is the curriculum decision making. Right now, this video is going to be kind of like a brain dump of everything. And I hate that phrase, by the way, of kind of just like what I'm thinking and what I'm going through. And none of this is curriculum that I am like, yes, hard and set going for next year. It's just kind of my, what I'm considering and what's kind of on the table. So some I'm more sure about than others. If you are interested in how I do curriculum though, I did make a how I choose curriculum video and that kind of does, that lays out my process. So I will link that so that you can um, check that out if you want to see just kind of how I personally go through it and what works best for me. So anyway, my name is Lauren. I am a homeschool mom to three girls. This will this is our fifth year homeschooling. Next year will be year six. Currently, I have a fifth grader, a third grader, and a first grader. If you followed me for a while, you already know this, but if you're new here, my third grader for the first time this year does go to a Christian school. Also, we have another one on the way. I have never homeschooled with a newborn before, and so a big reason is that um, what I'm considering for next year, I have to take into account. When we start our homeschool year, we will have a two-month-old baby that is going to completely, um, I don't know, our schedule is going to be a lot different and then it looks now. So that is something I'm considering. This is going to be a two-part video. Uh, it's gonna be part one is history, science, and Bible. Part two will be uh, language, arts, and math. So today I'm focusing specifically on um, our morning or group subjects, which is the history, the Bible, the science. And uh, in just a few days, I will have the English and the math. So if you're watching this now, just wait a few days. If it's been a while since this video has come out, that other video is out and you can check it out. It will be it will be on my channel up and posted. And just a little spoiler, a little teaser. We're making big changes for uh, language arts and math for next year. So make sure you stay tuned and watch that video in just a few days. First, we are starting with Bible. Bible is a tricky one because I feel like I'm pretty picky on what what I want to discuss and what we want to learn about. I don't want Sunday school lessons. I don't want today we're learning about Jonah and the whale and tomorrow we're learning about, um, you know, Noah's Ark or anything like that. I, they go to Sunday school, they go to church, they go to Awana, like we do that. And so they're learning all that there. I don't want that to be a repetition. I want something deeper. I want something that they are going to be we're learning how to study God's word, who the character of God truly is, how we can live our Christian life in a meaningful, practical way. So I want it to be just real for them, not just here's Bible story after Bible story. We've also done Who is God? And this is from Apologia. That is something that is a four-part series. And I talked about briefly in my um, mid-year review that it just wasn't fitting what I was exactly looking for. I wanted something a little deeper. My girls already kind of knew all of what they have been saying and we're over halfway finished with the book. So I don't know if I'm gonna go to part two with that next year. And I don't think that one is totally off the table, the level two. It's something I'm still really having to like, look at the samples about and see if there's any videos on them on YouTube and um, try to delve into that, but I don't know. So either the apology of one that's not off the table, I also might do <laughs> this one I found um, in the Christian, Christian book website is called Cat and Dog Theology, which I saw that and I was like, what is this really? And it sounds absolutely ridiculous and almost sacrilegious, but um, basically it's through the lens of a cat and a dog. They make the cat the worldly one and the dog like the more spiritual one who makes the right decision. So I don't know how well that would go over because while my girls love dogs, they also love cats too. So I don't know if they would like that the cat's kind of like the villain. There's like multiple parts to it. That I might do, I have to show them. That is something that I'm still thinking about. Some other mentions, um, I've looked into the ology and I've looked into our 24 family ways. Those just don't really at this point kind of align with what I'm looking for. 
again, they're not bad. I know they've worked well and gotten a lot of great reviews from other homeschool moms. I just don't know if that's something that we're really looking at in terms of um, what I'm looking for this year. It's kind of hard to explain what I'm looking for. I want something that's gonna span across the ages. Uh, if it has to be on the older side or the younger side, I'd rather it be on the airing on the side of being older. I don't want my, she'll be in sixth grade. I don't want her to be bored and like, yes, mom, we know all of this. I'd rather it be a little deeper and a little bit more on her level. And then the younger one um, can, can still glean off of that. She still really does listen and still absorb. So that is kind of what I'm thinking. I don't have concrete things. None of these are set in stone, but that is where I'm thinking for a Bible. Next is history. This one is a tough one too. I think when it comes to history, you kind of have to narrow down what you want to do as far as the type of history you want to have. There's different formats. So first you have your traditional textbook history. That's going to be your Abeka, your BJU Press. Masterbooks has several textbook histories that they have, not grass. So it's going to be textbook read page after page with usually with pictures. Then you have your literature based history and that's going to be like sunlight, book shark. That is going to be beautiful feet books. That is where you can have a spine and you are going to use um, mostly historical fiction to bring in the stories of history. So either whether that's through picture books or chapter books, it can be biographies as well. It's not just all historical fiction. There is, you know, they, they do bring in obviously real facts to teach history, but it's going to be very, very, very literature based. You're going to be reading a lot of different resources. And then you have something like story of the world, which is story based. It's going to be one big chapter book that you read, but you have a story. It's based, it's like written in story form. And so there's so, there's multiple ways. Those are the main ones. I know I'm, I can't cover all of the histories, but I think you get an idea. So there's many different facets and ways that you can study history. And I think narrowing down what you want to do um, and how you want to study it, you can narrow down picking out curriculums. And then even within all of those, you have like a Becca and BJU, that's kind of what I grew up with. So you study American history one year, you study uh, world history the next year, and it alternates back and forth. But there's also ones where a lot of other curriculum companies, they are making their series into two, three, four years. So you would study ancient civilizations one year and then like the Reformation and until you get to modern history. So it would take four years. And so even within traditional and literature based, you have those, whether you want to just study um, history kind of all together one year and then change it up, or if you want to make it span out for four years and then start the cycle over. So with history, it was a little bit tricky this year. Um, I knew we were going with beautiful feet books. We were going to do that all together. That was hands down a favorite in our household and in our homeschool. But my fifth grader, my oldest, again, she had only one year of American history at this point and I figured is it the end of the world if she doesn't have a history a more formal history till sixth grade no but it would be nice to just kind of get her feet wet and kind of introduce her to uh, a world history so I let her choose what she wanted um, she is a huge 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 reader she reads I mean I'm not exaggerating probably a couple hundred books a year she's always reading always has three or four books going. So I thought a literature based history is what she would want to do. No, she was not into that. I said, what about story of the world where it's like a story from? No, she was not into that. She wanted to do a traditional history. So we did a Becca old world history and that's where she's studying from ancient to modern times of Europe, Africa, Asia, like the Middle East area and um, Australia. So she is really enjoying that. She really loves it. It's a one year study. So when she's finished with that, she can either uh, choose American history or going back to world history. So where I'm coming from next year, what should I do? So this one is really tough for me. I am going back and forth like, what do we wanna do? Do we wanna spend four years um, like tied down to one curriculum? where we're learning about ancient history for a whole year. It sounds awful to me. And I know it's not all about the parent, but like as, as the teacher, you still wanna be enjoying what you are teaching. Otherwise your motivation to teach it and to stick with it is going to go down the tubes 
very quickly. And so yes, the kids should have a say and I do let my kids have a say, but you as a parent also get a say in what you're teaching. And so one year of like ancient history or one year of like medieval history just sounds like the worst. Yes, I prefer like a one or two year program, but those are very rare. I don't think there's any two year programs. I think it's like one year or four years um, with master books being three years. And so, um, yeah, those are, it's been really tough to find something. Also, I said, well, I could do a literature based approach and that like Beautiful Feet books has early, like early to Amer early American history and then modern history, American history. So that is broken up into two years. But like I've said before, I am not a huge chapter book reader lover. So as far as basing a whole history curriculum on that and having to read, you know, 15 of those a year, that's just probably not realistic for me as much as I would love it to be real. Like I would love to do one of those beautiful, you know, sunlight or book shark or something like that. Like I go back to it every year. And if this is you, you're not alone. I go back to this every single year and I always am like, yes, I can do it, but I have to be realistic. And like, that's just not going to happen. So my girls do love textbook, but I do want to incorporate some literature to bring it alive. So um, I really, really do love the master books, America's Story. I've read some a lot of the samples I even had the book I ended up selling it because we didn't go with it a few years ago but it was really interesting and engaging and I think it would be a really good spine to maybe perhaps pair with something else like maybe maybe a beautiful feet books their early American history with picture books so that way that would be my spine and then the picture books could be they could be kind of like a supplement I think just to break it up and make it a little bit more interesting because Larissa really does want like a textbook style and Lola would love the picture book style. So I'm just trying to think that's what I might go with next year. I'm not sure that is what I am thinking about though for next year. Lastly is science and this one is pretty easy for us. We have done, again, we have done um, a Becca science. We did like their second grade version, which is a textbook science where you take one chapter and you learn about space. Another chapter is the human body. Another one is um, plants. Another one is animals. You get the idea. And you're learning about probably eight or nine different subjects in a year. And then it just builds on top of itself. So you learn about the same ones every year, but you just get a little deeper and deeper and deeper every single year. So that is, you know, traditional science and textbook science. So that I don't mind. None of us really minded that. We we really enjoyed it. So I would not rule out traditional textbook science. You have apologia, which I know a lot of love homeschoolers love, um, but you're supposed to spend almost a year. You can either spend a semester or a year on one subject. So like birds would be your whole year and or fish, you know, sea creatures. And I know people love it and it's not a bash. I just... I know my kids and they would be like, by March or April, they're like, are we done talking about birds? I can't handle talking about birds anymore. And I couldn't handle teaching about birds anymore. And so I can't go with something where you spend a whole year talking about one subject. So what we like and what we've been using uh, the past two years is the good and the beautiful science units. Their science units are done really well. They're interesting. Some we've loved more than others. Um, but they're all done really well. Each science unit has about anywhere from like 10 to 15 lessons. And so you can really get maybe like four units in per year. So you can talk about like mammals or space, the human body and botany. And you're studying those four subjects and you get to choose which ones you want to learn about that year, which is really interesting. We really enjoyed it. We are about to, we just started marine biology. And so I think we're going to pretty much go with um, the good and the beautiful next year for science. Again, I don't know if my daughter, Alexia, who's in third grade, I don't know if she'll be home with us next year or if she'll be in school next year. We ha still haven't made that decision, but she didn't really love the good and the beautiful science. She likes a textbook, textbook science where you just go from chapter to chapter, fill in a worksheet and be done. And so I don't know if she is home with us, I'm not sure how she'll feel about that if she just kind of wants to do her own science and her own reading and do her, you know, I don't know. 
that I still am kind of having to figure out in the back of my mind for if she is with us and what she wants to do just to make it interesting and engaging for her too. So science, um, that I think I have probably the most clarity on of the three, but I still, we're still not a hundred percent on what we are going to be doing. Nobody is really just like, all right, here's this and this and this. We all do research. We all look up YouTube videos. I've been doing nothing but looking up different YouTube videos for the past several weeks now, just trying to figure out what we want to do and what we want to go with. It's not an easy decision, even though it may look like here's my entire curriculum and here it is. Like this is really the thought process that I go through and I'm sure many other people are trying to like weed out what works and what's not and what their goal is and what they want to accomplish with their school year and what's realistic going to be realistic for them um, in that season of life. So again, this is just kind of what I'm thinking. We're not set to one or the other at this point. Please make sure to leave your comments down below of what curriculum you are considering for next year or really loving maybe not even necessarily to suggest to me but just as a kind of big like open forum of just kind of like a discussion a chat as we would have if we were in person talking so post those down in the comments below thanks so much for watching i hope you enjoyed this video and if you want to see how i go about choosing curriculum make sure you check out this video right here and you can go and see all my methods that I use. I hope you have a good one. You take care. Bye-bye.